Chapter 45, Third Year Noble and Most Ancient Saturday, the 15th of September, 1973 Serious? Nothing. Serious? Silence. Oh, for the love of Sirius Orion Black the Third, I know you're in there. James hammered on the door. Piss off, Potter. James stepped back from the bathroom door and sat on his bed, looking dejected. Sirius had not joined them for dinner and had been locked in the bathroom now for two hours without making a sound. Leave him alone, Remus said, turning the page of his book. He lay belly down on his bed, pretending he wasn't at all concerned. He'll come out when he's ready. That was something he'd often heard matrons say, at least once a week, to one of the boys at St Edmunds. Usually a new kid had a tantrum and locked himself in a room or crawled into some small space that no one could reach him. The response from staff was always the same. Ignore it until he realises no one cares, until he realises that nothing he can do will make a difference. It always worked. Rumus knew this firsthand. It's not like him, James said, obviously disregarding Remus's draconian tactic. I could kill Snape, you know, for saying that stuff. Remus shrugged. Black already hates his family, though. I don't know why he let Snivellus bother him about it. James stared at Remus, dumbfounded, as if he had just said something unimaginably cruel. They're still his family, Mooney. They're horrible to him. That doesn't mean he doesn't care what they think, James sighed. Look, Lupin, maybe you'd better go before he comes out. Go and find Peter in the library or something. I'm Sirius's friend too, Rima sat up indignantly. Yeah, yeah, of course you are, James waved a hand. But, well, if he's been crying, I think he'd rather no one else saw. I don't care if he's crying. I want to help. This was a bit of a lie. Remus had always felt uncomfortable around crying people. He never knew what to do with himself. But he really did want to help. Hadn't he always tried to help? More than ever, Remus wanted to come clean about having prompted Narcissa into the unbreakable vow, just to see James's face. But he calmed himself. It wasn't a competition. And even if it was, it wasn't one he would win. Okay. James said, but you have to be understanding about it. You can't start a fight. What are you talking about? Remus was mortally offended. He never started fights. You do. You're always bickering, I swear. We do not bicker, Remus snapped. James just raised his eyebrows, which was infuriating. The dark-haired boy hopped off the bed once more and went back to the bathroom door. Serious? Please come out and talk to us. Get lost, Potter. Leave me alone. James sighed again. Remus, annoyed with James now just as much as he was annoyed with Sirius, got up too and strode over to the door, indicating for James to move. He rapped hard on the wood himself. I said piss off, Sirius, it's me, Remus said, his voice hard and cold like matrons. Look, if you're going to move about like a big Jesse... Then at least let us in so we can start planning our revenge. Silence. Remus tutted. Fine, sulk. But you're being a selfish git. You know, you're not the only one whose family hates you. Remus! James exclaimed, scandalised. Remus shrugged. It was worth a try. There was a shuffling noise inside the bathroom. Remus pressed his ear to the door, then reeled back as it opened. Sirius's gloomy face peered out. Finally, James said, relieved. Look, come out and... Mooney can come in, Sirius said, opening the door just wide enough for Remus to squeeze inside, then slamming it back and fixing the lock. It was dark inside. Lumos, Remus muttered. His wand point lit up, casting a pale glow over the small white room and Sirius's pale face. He had been crying. His eyes were dark and red. Remus looked away quickly, glancing up at the light fittings. The bulbs were smashed. He tutted. You and your temper, huh? He said. Repairer. The lights mended and flicked back on. 
Remus extinguished his wand light. I didn't do it on purpose, Sirius sniffed, wiping his nose with the back of his hand. It was a sullen, childish gesture, somehow inappropriate for Sirius, who was, even at thirteen, usually the epitome of grace and poise. I still smash stuff sometimes, when I'm angry. My magic gets out of whack. Oh, right, Remus nodded, though he'd never heard of that before. So, revenge? Sirius asked, sitting down on the toilet lid and looking at Remus expectantly. Revenge, Remus agreed. What do you want to do to him? Not just him, Sirius glowered. All of them. Every single Slytherin in the school. Remus nodded enthusiastically. That sounded a bit bonkers, but it was a start. There would be time to talk him down later, when he was acting less weird and wasn't in danger of blowing up any more light bulbs. Yep, yeah, we'll get them all black. Now come on, let's go and- I'm not coming out yet, Sirius said sulkily, crossing his arms. Remus sighed. He sat on the floor, leaning against the door. Okay, fine. Want to talk about it? Because James is probably the best person to... Did you mean what you just said? Sirius interrupted him again. Do you think my family hates me? Oh God, I don't know, do I? I'm not exactly an authority on families. Remus rubbed the back of his head. I was just trying to get you to open the door, to be honest. He'd meant it as a joke, but Sirius didn't smile. He looked down at Remus through a curtain of dark hair. You said your family hates you. Well, I suppose they must have, Remus explained. Otherwise they wouldn't... Well, I wouldn't have been sent to St Edmunds, would I? Doesn't mean they hated you. No, Remus reflected. But I don't think they can have liked me very much all the same. You're not... I mean, it doesn't bother you. Remus shrugged. Sometimes, obviously. But, you know, no one's entitled to a happy life. Matron had said that many times. For the first time saying it out loud, Remus wondered if she was entirely right. Blimey, Lupin, you're a right downer, you know that. You let me in. Remus kicked Sirius lightly in the shin with the toe of his trainer. If you want cheering up, then I'll go get Potter. Nah, Sirius shrugged, smiling weakly. You're okay. Remus laughed. James didn't want me to come in. Said we'd just bicker. He what? Sirius shook his head. We do not bicker. That's what I said, Remus assured him. My family, Sirius said suddenly. I don't think they hate me. I think they want to like me, really. But I keep letting everyone down. It's funny most of the time, but... Well, it isn't today. Remus didn't know what to say, so he just kept quiet. He thought about Narcissa, vowing to face death if she could not marry Lucius. He thought about Regulus, who often stared at his older brother across the dining table, green-eyed with jealousy. Families were a messy business. Perhaps he ought to be grateful to Lyle Lupin for ending it all in one swoop, so that Remus never had to know whether or not he would have made his father proud, or whether he would have been a disappointment after all. Friday the 5th of October, 1973 I've got it! I've really got it this time! That's nice, Pete, Remus replied blithely, reading his arithmancy book. We should dye his robes pink! He'd just dye them back, it's too simple, Where do we even get his robes from? Remus turned the page, he resumed reading. Ouch! Bloody hell! There's something wrong with the bludger! Sirius shouted, standing up. Come on, McKinnon! Move your blooming ass! Do you mind leaving her ass out of it? Mary snapped from a few rows up. They were watching the Gryffindor Quidditch practice. Well, Sirius, Peter and Mary were. Remus had just wanted to get on with his reading. Jealous, MacDonald, Sirius replied cheekily. Dye his hair pink, then, Peter persisted, shaking Remus's arm for attention. I've learnt colour-changing spells now, 
I can do it. So can he, Rimmer said, jerking his arm back and searching for his place on the page. You know, Mooney, you could show a bit more interest, Sirius said. In Quidditch, or taking down your arch nemesis? Both? Either? I'm here, aren't I? Rumors turned another page. Who's your arch nemesis? Mary asked, getting up and coming down to sit beside Sirius. If I told you, I'd have to kill you, Sirius said dryly. Mary rolled her eyes. Is it Snape? All three boys looked at Mary in surprise. She laughed. Come on, you lot, it's not exactly a secret. You've all had it in with each other since first year. Plus, Lily is one of my best friends. Don't talk to me about Evans, Sirius groaned. I hear enough as it is. I think she's an idiot, going around with that creep, Mary said, rubbing her arms as if just the thought of Severus made her skin crawl. You know he made Marlene cry the other day, called her dad something really nasty. Makes no sense either, because Lily says he's half-born, Severus. Anyway, someone needs to teach him a lesson. Ha! Sirius barked. He's half-blood? Brilliant. Yeah, Mary said coolly. So's Remus, and I'm muggle-born, so what? Remus finally looked up from his book to smirk at Sirius, raising an eyebrow at him. Sirius looked down, then back at the Quidditch. Nothing, he muttered. I'm not like that. Good, Mary said primly. I get enough of that shit from the Slytherins. Rumours was inclined to agree with Mary, who had more backbone than he did, putting Sirius in his place like that. Insults from the Slytherins had definitely increased this term, though it might have only been noticeable to non-pure-blood students. Rumours had started to worry about travelling between classes by himself, though he rarely had to. He'd had a few near misses anyway, and he'd been called a mudblood twice. He didn't tell James or Sirius this. It seemed a bit like whinging. Plus, as far as insults went, he felt he'd been called much worse than a mudblood. He didn't like the idea that it had made Marlene cry, though. It was all very well that rumours got picked on by Snape and Mulciba, or even puny, sadistic little Barty Crouch, but making girls cry was another thing altogether. Remus felt a surge of protectiveness and chivalry towards his friend. He clenched his fist, then unclenched them. The problem was that Snape wasn't the type to attack with hexes and big pranks. He could do both of those things. He was every bit as able as the marauders, but Snape relied on words to hurt people, and they were much trickier to counteract. Unless you changed the words. Oh! Oh! Remus put his book down suddenly. He grabbed Sirius's arm. Oh! What? Sirius frowned at him. He'd been absorbed in watching the training while Remus's mind had wandered. There had been another opportunity for Sirius to join the Quidditch team this year, but he had declined. Maybe because he'd changed his mind. Maybe because he didn't want to be embarrassed in tryouts again. We change the words! Remus gabbled. We change what he says! What are you talking about? Sirius clucked his tongue. Snivellus? Yeah, there are spells you can do to stop someone speaking, right? Sirius coloured slightly, looking at Remus. Yeah, he said cautiously. Okay, so how much more difficult can it be to, like, twist their words? We could set a trigger word, or a few, mudblood, or blood traitor, or half-breed, or whatever, and instead... We make him say something really nice, or something stupid, whatever we feel like. Mooney, where did you hear all of those? James scored a goal, and Peter leapt up, clapping wildly. Potter did a few loops on his broom, showing off. Sirius grinned up at his friend. Mary's knee was touching Sirius's, Remus noticed. They were sitting really close, actually. So, Remus grabbed Sirius's shoulder again, trying to get him to focus. What do you think? I love it, Sirius said simply. We should make him say something really ridiculous, like, I don't know, snuggle bunnies or something. We'll go to the library after this, yeah? Can I come? Mary asked. Sirius shrugged. If you want, I suppose, 
It's serious marauder business, though. Mary giggled. Remus wondered if Sirius found that as annoying as he did. He picked up his book and returned to arithmancy. Twenty minutes later, the training session was over, and the marauders were walking towards the castle, Mary and Marlene in tow. Sirius and Remus both babbling excitedly to James about their brilliant plan. It had somehow become their plan, in Sirius's mind. We were supposed to be off the pitch by five o'clock, someone grunted in front of them. Remus looked up to see the slithering Quidditch team walking towards them, brooms in hand, kits slung over their shoulders. We're leaving now, Bulstrode. Bloody hell, James said, annoyed. The pug-faced Slytherin captain just scowled at him and pushed past, deliberately knocking James with his shoulder as he did so. Oi! Sirius pulled out his wand. James held him back. What's it to you, Black? Bulstrode sneered. If that's still even your name. The Slytherins all laughed, including their smallest, newest member, who had been behind the others. Regulus Black. It took James and Remus to pull Sirius away, as the Slytherins snickered and whispered. Remember the plan, Remus whispered. Sirius slackened, then nodded. Promise me we'll get all of them, he growled. Chapter 46, Third Year, The Slug Club Monday the 8th of October, 1973 Sirius, you'd better come up with the replacement words. You're the most, uh, verbose? Sirius supplied, yawning. Loquacious? Garrulous? Exactly, Remus supplied. I'll work on figuring out which spells we need. And James... You can figure out how we actually managed to cast it on the whole house. That's going to be really hard, I think. Peter, you better help with that. Hark at Mooney, James laughed, buttering his toast. Giving the orders now. The marauders are a socialist utopia, James yawned again. We don't have leaders. Enjoying muggle studies, are you? Remus raised an eyebrow. Sirius lay his head on the dining table, closing his eyes and flipping two fingers at Remus. An owl landed on the breakfast table. It was James's. Sirius's owl had been confiscated by his parents so many times that he may as well not have one at all. Peter typically relied on the school owls, and Remus never received post anyway. What the hell? James opened the letter offered by the bird with a frown. The... Slug club? Oh yeah. Sirius opened a sleepy eye. I got one too. Apparently old sluggy like students who have a certain star quality. So me, obviously. And I suppose you too. Neither Peter nor Remus received an invitation, but this was not much of a surprise. Peter was quite good at potions, but lacked an aptitude for almost anything else. As for Remus, he tried to fly under the radar where Professor Slughorn was concerned. We won't go then, James said, folding up his letter decisively. All for one and one for all, us marauders. I don't care, Remus shrugged. Go if you want. I bet Lily's going. Do you? Yeah. She is really good at potions, isn't she? James said, getting that funny look on his face again. She's really good at everything. Probably the cleverest in the year. Oi! Remus and Sirius said in unison. James raised an eyebrow. Cleverest girl, then. Sirius closed his eyes once more, satisfied, and attempted to doze through the rest of breakfast. Thursday, 11th of October, 1973. The party was held later that week. James, still uneasy about the exclusion of the two lesser marauders, tried to convince Peter and Remus to don the invisibility cloak and come anyway. Sirius thought this sounded like a good laugh, but Remus personally thought it sounded beneath him. He had no desire to be among the chosen few. In the end, Peter declined too, though he had clearly been on the cusp of agreeing to the ridiculous scheme. Anyway, Thursdays were Remus's favourite day of the school week. Specifically, Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m. 
that slot in his timetable allotted to care of magical creatures. Their Wednesday lessons were always theory-based, and rumours like those too. He'd never heard anyone talk about biology like Professor Ferox. But Thursdays were given over to practical lessons, and the class would walk out onto the grounds, or else arrive at the classroom to find a new creature waiting for them, Ferox bright with excitement to show them. After measles, they'd seen doxies and crups. This week was Mertlaps. Mary and Marlene squealed at the creatures Ferox presented in a large hutch-like run at the back of the classroom. Rumours couldn't blame them. Merlaps were extremely unappealing. They were rat-like creatures, with masses of writhing tentacles sprouting from their backs like maggots. We can't do crups and measles every week, Ferox grinned, gesturing them all to gather round. Not all of the magical creatures we learn about will be cute, but diversity is the spice of life, hmm? I hope we don't have to touch them, Marlene whispered, shuddering. Rumours didn't mind. They were gross, but he didn't mind gross things. He had a pretty strong stomach. Professor Ferox had already told him so last week they, when they were watching the doxy eggs hatch. Remus had beamed with pride all day long. Ferox was looking at Remus now. Mr Lupin, I'm sure I can rely on you to tell me the beneficial purposes of Mertlap tentacles. Remus tried not to smile too broadly or look too much like a goody-goody. They're really good for soothing superficial cuts and abrasions, he said promptly. And if you eat them, they make you impervious to most common hexes. Excellent! Five points to Gryffindor. Rumours couldn't help but smile a bit. Who cared about the stupid slug club? Slughorn was nowhere near as cool as Ferox. Ferox was clever and unpretentious and funny and did dangerous things. Rumours had never given so much thought into having a career, but for some weeks now he had been entertaining the idea that whatever he did when he grew up, he would like to be just like Professor Ferox. Mind you, he'd have to start eating more, or weight training or something, because if Ferox was anything, he was broad. And Remus, though he was inches above the other marauders now in height, remained eternally weedy. It's your metabolism. Madam Pomfrey told him when he'd asked one morning after a moon. You could eat more or rest more, but it may just be one of those things, I'm afraid. I shouldn't worry, dear. You're as healthy as can be expected. That didn't sound all that reassuring, but he accepted it. His father had been thin too, he was sure. At least he wasn't pudgy like Peter, who still looked like a little boy compared to the rest of them. This fact was made even clearer later that evening, when Sirius and James stood fully dressed in their formal robes, looking every inch the young lords of the manor. And Peter sat staring at them enviously from his bed, already in his pyjamas. Do you think they'll be dancing? Sirius asked anxiously, straightening his tie. Nah, James replied, desperately trying to comb his hair flat. We'd have been told to bring partners or something. Sirius slumped on the bed. I hate stuff like this. Mooney, you go for me. Bet old Sluggy won't even notice. Fat chance, Rumus snorted from behind his copy of Verbal Assault, Defensive Tongue Twisters. Slughorn can't even remember my name half the time, and he'll feel a bit short change when he's expecting a pure blood black and gets the half-blood kid he keeps calling Lynchpin. Ugh, he's such a slimy old tosser. Like an actual slug, Sirius smirked to himself, and nudged Remus with his elbow. Huh, <laughs> an actual slug, Mooney. Remus smiled back, looking up from his book. Are you ready then? James sighed, tossing away his comb, apparently accepting that his attempt was futile. Suppose, Sirius grunted, getting up laboriously. I'll come down with you, Remus said. Might as well go to the library. Wanna come, Pete? Peter looked at him as if he was insane and shook his head. James, Sirius and Remus made their way down to the common room 
where, much to James's glee, Lily was waiting for them in a very pretty turquoise dress. Unfortunately for James, however, as the three marauders approached, it became clear it was not him she was waiting for. Remus, she said, standing up. You look nice, Evans, James said, hopefully. Sirius sighed loudly. I wanted to speak to Remus, Lily said, ignoring James. Will you walk with me to the party? Not going, Remus shrugged. Not invited. Oh, Lily flushed a bit, looking embarrassed. Sorry, I I just assumed. What did you want to talk about? Remus asked impatiently. His book was heavy, and the full moon was due on Friday, making him more agitated than usual. Lily eyed James and Sirius, clearly not wanting to say anything in front of them. Remus sighed. I'm going to the library. If you want to walk that way with me, then fine. It would take Lily out of her way, but Remus decided he didn't care. He pushed through the portrait hole and heard her scamper after him, her patent black party shoes clicking on the flagstones. What's the book? Lily panted, struggling to catch up with Remus's long leg stride. Nothing, he said deliberately covering the title with his arm. Just some research. It's not something nasty, is it? Lily asked disapprovingly. It's not another horrid thing to do to Severus. I knew that's what you wanted to talk about. Remus rolled his eyes, still walking. Well, you have to admit... Sirius did start at that time in Hogsmeade. I mean, he called Sev- I don't care, Lily, Remus snapped, turning a sharp corner. He didn't have to be so nasty. Sirius and James were just having a laugh, and Snape had to go make it personal. Ah, oh, Lily stamped her foot. You're all as bad as each other. You know he hates people like you too, don't you? Remus countered, stopping now that they were outside the library. He rounded on her. You know that his sort hate our sort. Our sort, Lily tutted. Honestly, this whole blood purity thing is getting ridiculous, and it doesn't excuse he made Marlene cry, Remus persisted. Mary told us. What do you think he says behind your back? Lily's cheeks were pink again. Sev would never say anything like that about me. He's my best friend. Well, good for you, but the rest of us aren't all so fortunate. Remus spat. Lily stared at him, blinking for a few moments, stunned into silence. She looked like she might cry, and Remus felt a tiny twinge of guilt. When she spoke again, her voice was meek and small. What are you going to do to him? Remus sighed. She might as well know. Not just him. All of them he said, lowering his voice and bending down slightly in case they were overheard. And nothing bad. If he stops calling everyone else names, then nothing at all. She looked at him sceptically. He straightened up. That's all I'll say. You'll be late for your party. Go on. Later that evening, Grimmers thought he had just about cracked it. He was sitting up in the common room and made his final notes. Now all he needed was Sirius's list of replacement words, and they could begin work on the prank. It was almost eleven o'clock when the portrait hole swung open, and Lily Evans marched in with a face like thunder. There were odd silvery marks on her dress that caught the light as she charged in. "'What's up, Evans?' Remus asked tentatively, still feeling a bit sorry for being so short with her outside the library. "'Ask them!' she hissed furiously. I'm going for a shower. He did not wonder who she was referring to, but if he had, it was answered within moments as Sirius and James came through the portrait hole next, laughing hysterically. Rumours couldn't help but grin too. Their glee was infectious. What did you do? It was all serious, mate, James clapped his friend on the back, then bowed to him elaborately, fluttering his hand. Sirius did the same back. Couldn't have done it without you, my dear chap. Done what? Remus asked, trying to keep a lid on his irritation as it sprang up out of nowhere. Slugs, James said, 
slugs bloody everywhere, started with these little jelly slug sweets that were laid out to eat. Simple enough tra- transfiguration spell, Sirius shrugged with false modesty, throwing himself into an armchair and slinging one leg over the arm. But then, James sat next to Remus, starry-eyed, then they started to multiply. And this is why Evans is pissed off with you? Well, did you see the slimy bits on her dress? And, um, in her hair a bit too, I think. They were really fast-moving slugs. They kind of got everywhere. No sense of humour, that one, Sirius yawned. She ought to be thanking us for livening things up a bit. The nerve of some people, Remus said dryly. See, you understand, Mooney, Sirius grinned. You'd let us slime you, wouldn't you? Remus thought it best to ignore that, and address James instead. So, did Slughorn know it was you? Yeah, it was pretty obvious. We were the only ones not screaming. Detentions? Three weeks, cauldron scrubbing. That's fine. Helps build up my muscles. James flexed his arms, which, it had to be said, didn't look particularly muscular. Good news, though, Sirius piped up. No more parties for us. We're out of the slug club. And into the history books, James crowed, causing all three of them to dissolve into fits of laughter. Chapter 47, Third Year James Potter and the Lumpy Elephant Dung Tuesday the 30th of October, 1973 With Halloween and the traditional Hogwarts feast looming, Remus was keen to have the word-swapping spell perfected in time in order to have the maximum reach. It's fine, Mooney. We all know what we're doing, James said, returning from the Quidditch practice covered in mud and soaking wet. The evenings were getting darker, and Remus hardly ever went to watch the team practice any more though Sirius and Peter usually did. Mary always went too, to watch Marlene. She was following them everywhere these days. I think we should just test it, Remus bit his lip, watching Sirius cast a drying spell on James. Oh no, Peter said, folding his arms. I won't be your guinea pig this time. Last time, I couldn't rid that patch of purple hair for weeks. I'd forgotten about that. Sirius said dreamily. That worked really well, once we'd figured out the kinks. Do it on him, Peter pointed at Sirius. It's his turn. Don't whinge, Pete, Sirius groaned. He flopped down on his bed. Do it to me, Mooney. I'm not a coward. Okay, fine. Remus withdrew his wand. Sirius leapt up. Wait. You want to do it now? Well, the sooner the better. What about the counter jinx? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got that sorted. Remus let a smile creep onto his face. He knew for certain what the counter jinx was, but it was too much fun to watch Sirius squirm. Oh, for goodness sake, James sighed, getting out of his Quidditch gear. Do it to me, Lupin. I don't mind. Only... I don't want to say any of the words on the awful list of yours. Can you do it for something else? If you like, Remus replied. Yeah, about this list, Mooney, Sirius said, picking it up off the bedside table. What? Well, it's really long. Yeah, Remus raised an eyebrow. What's your point? They're all insults for non-purebloods, aren't they? Yeah, Sirius said, scratching his chin. Yeah, they are, but, um, well, I just didn't think there were so many. Never seen them all written out like that. And anyway, where did you hear all of these? Where'd you think? Remus met Sirius's eyes deliberately. He'd been waiting for something like this. Don't be a girl about it, Black. Doesn't bother me. Right, James. What word do you want to swap? Evans, Sirius said suddenly, sick of hearing that coming out of his mouth. 
Okay, Remus smiled. Then change it to what? Don't tell me, James said. We'll do a blind test, then we know it definitely works. Pick something Black hasn't come up with yet. Remus nodded, scribbled something onto a piece of parchment, then raised his wand, concentrating. He flicked his wand sharply at James and uttered the incantation. All four of them stood by, silently watching. Uh, Remus said. Did you feel anything? No. James looked down at himself, as if he expected to see something different. Well, say it, then, Sirius urged. Her full name, Remus added. James cleared his throat theatrically, squaring his shoulders. He outstretched one arm and placed a hand on his chest, as though he were about to make some grand, grand announcement. Lumpy elephant dung, he proclaimed. Peter burst into fits of laughter so strong that he almost fell off the bed. Sirius whooped with laughter, and James turned bright red. I didn't know you were going to pick something like that, he said. That's my future wife. Who's your future wife? Sirius asked quickly. Elephant dung, James replied, then clapped his hands over his mouth. Lupin! You said you didn't mind, Remus replied, businesslike. Now, try saying Evans again, but really, really try to break my spell, okay? Elephant dung, James said promptly, then with more force. Elephant dung, he screwed up his eyes. Elephant dung, lumpy elephant dung. He hung his head sadly. Peter could hardly breathe for laughing now, and Sirius had to lean on the bedpost for support. Excellent. Remus smiled. He put down his list. Hey, it's six o'clock. Should we go for dinner? Yeah, just do the counter jinx first. James said. Oh no. Rima shook his head solemnly. Sorry, Potter, but I want to test the spell thoroughly. We need to be sure it won't wear off too quickly. I'll unjinx you tomorrow morning. What? James roared. Oh yes. <laughs> Sirius gasped, wiping tears from his eyes. Sorry, Rima said, not sorry at all. Just be glad we didn't pick a common word, I suppose. But, but what if I run into elephant dung? Oh, I don't think you will. Remus gave a small smile. Hardly any elephants in Scotland. James grimaced. You know what I mean? Lumpy. Lumpy elephant dung. Remus shrugged. Don't yell her name. Come on, I'm starving. James, look who it is. Shut up. James gritted his teeth and looked stonily at his dinner plate. Sirius shook his head disapprovingly. The picture of piety. That's no way to greet. What's her name? I'm not rising to it, you know. I'm stronger than that, James said, viciously cutting into his steak and kidney pie. She's right there, mate, Sirius said, trying to control his smirk. How will she ever notice you if you don't call her? Oi, Evans, Remus said suddenly, waving at the redhead. Wanna sit with us? She stopped and looked at them warily. Why? You're a Gryffindor, we're Gryffindors, Sirius said, getting up to give her his seat next to James. We're supposed to sit together, plus it'll really bother Potter. Well, in that case, Lily sat down. Sirius pushed Remus up to make room beside him. Lily looked at James curiously, who had turned beetroot red. Why do I bother you, Potter? You don't, he said quickly. They're just being prats. Language, Potter, Sirius said, severely pouring gravy over his mashed potatoes and peas. That's no way to speak in front of a lady. What's going on? Lily eyed Remus suspiciously. Are you all making fun of me? We're making fun of James, Peter squeaked, sounding as though he was having a hard time containing his excitement. For once, he was not the butt of the joke, and it was clearly a dizzying notion. I'm testing a spell on him, 
Rima said simply. Lily's eyes flashed as she analysed the situation. And what what was the spell? Mutatio verbi. Her eyes shot up. Is that... Oh my god, Remus! Which word? Um... Lumpy elephant dung, James said glumly. Peter spat out his pumpkin juice and knocked his fork flying. Lily giggled nervously. What did you say, Potter? Lumpy, James strained to fight the spell. Lumpy elephant dung. Lumpy. Lumpy? Oh, for pity's sake. Lily glared at Sirius. It's my name, isn't it? Don't look at me, Sirius grinned, holding his hands up. It was Mooney's idea. Lily turned to Remus, her frown disappearing. Really, Remus? Uh, yeah, but it, w- it wasn't meant to be offensive or any. That's amazing, she said. Really clever magic. Wait until tomorrow, Peter said, recovering from his hysterics. Sirius kicked him under the table. I'm so sorry, elephant dung, James said, looking genuinely forlorn. This time, even Lily laughed. Wednesday, 31st of October, 1973. Nothing's happening. Well, they're not going to start insulting each other, are they? We have to push them into it. Pete, go and... Oi! I'm a pureblood. Oh yeah, fair play. Um, Mooney, go and trip one of them up or something. Do it to Snivellus or my cousin. Yeah, get sissy. No. Rumor said quietly, ignoring the fact that he actually had no problem with Narcissa. He didn't want to be so obvious. We'll just wait. Patience, Black. Patience. But it might take days. It won't, Mary said stonily. You three must be blind if you haven't seen what's going on around here. That shut them up. Mary was sitting beside Sirius for the second time that week. Remus didn't mind. He liked Mary. She was funny and brusque and bolshy, but unfailingly kind and full of compassion. She was his friend, but, well, she wasn't a marauder, was she? Her presence felt intrusive somehow, didn't quite mesh with their usual back and forth. And she always sat next to Sirius, which meant no one could talk to him without her listening and batting her eyes. Of course, Remus knew that she fancied him and everything but he wasn't sure that Sirius knew that yet. Or perhaps that's how you were supposed to act when someone fancied you. What's been going on then? James asked very seriously. Do you get cold stuff, MacDonald? She shrugged, sipping her pumpkin juice. It's been worse this year. You must know, Remus. Remus nodded, vaguely, looking away, as if he was more interested in watching the Slytherins. It was the Halloween feast and everyone was in high spirits. Professor Flitwick had enchanted glittering black bats to swoop over their heads, fine silvery cobwebs glistening from the rafters, and the great hall was filled with an autumnal smells of roast pumpkin, wood smoke and baked apples. So, James continued slowly, have all the Muggleborns been getting it? Even... Even elephant dung. Oh, for fuck's sake, Remus, please fix me. If you'll do my potions homework, Remus replied quick as a dart. Fine, anything. I'll give you my bloody broomstick if you just... Finite. Remus pointed his wand at James. James stared at him, looking stunned. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> Lily Evans, he said very clearly, then grinned. What now, Potter? Lily turned around, her conversation with Marlene interrupted. Will you go out with me? No. She turned away again. Cheers, Mooney. Any time. Wait, Sirius said. Wait just a minute. The counter jinx was finite incantatum. Yep. Yeah. But that's just a standard counter spell. Rima shrugged. I never said it was anything difficult. You purebloods don't have an ounce of common sense between you. Mary squawked with laughter. James choked on his roast potato, and Sirius slapped Remus on the back. 
I swear, Mooney, when it comes to evil schemes, none of us have got anything on you. Remus flushed with pride and shook him off, returning to his dinner. Look! Peter cried suddenly, pointing a chubby finger in the direction of the Slytherin table. A Hufflepuff second year had wandered too close to Mulciber, who stood up and was looming over them. Yes, Sirius whispered. Go on, you big troll. The Hufflepuff was trembling so much they had sloshed their drink, spilling most of it down their own robes, but also lightly sprinkling the toes of Mulciber's huge black shoes. The snub-nosed Slytherin grabbed the Hufflepuff by the tie. The rest of the Slytherins turned to watch eagerly. Clean that up, you angelic sweetie pops. Dead silence. The Hufflepuff looked confused and let out a nervous laughter. Mulciba looked stupider than usual. What did you say, Mulciba? Snape asked, staring at him. Angelic sweetie pops! Mulciba roared, red faced. No, I meant darling sugar plum. No! Goody gumdrops! The entire hall erupted in laughter. Bloody hell, Sirius said under his breath. Mulciba's really got a mouth on him, hmm? I didn't think they'd use half of those. Sit down, you idiot, Snape chastised the bully, who had let go of the Hufflepuff's tie and was helplessly spouting cutesy nonsense. That was brilliant, Sirius. Mary hugged him. Remus suddenly lost his appetite. Sirius just tossed his hair gallantly. Just wait, he said. That was just the beginning. End of chapter 47